Hello again, this is Thomas solving the group theory exercises. Here in exercise 1 of problem sheet 3, we want to take a look at a matrix representation of the symmetry group of H. The symmetry group of H contains all elements OA which commute with H. And then we have the eigenspace to a fixed eigenvalue EL of phi i, and phi i is we call, we say it's L dimensional. So what we have to show is uh, this definition of the matrix elements T and J is in fact a, a good uh, definition of this matrix representation. This definition means nothing else that the uh, transformed vector can be written as a linear combination of vectors out of this eigenspace. And this is equivalent to saying that every eigenspace is left invariant under symmetry transformations with com which commute with H. So how do we proceed? Okay, we say that this is a group. Therefore we can say that what we have to show is equivalent of saying OB and OA must be in the same group. So the, the, if we act with A first and then with B, the resulting symmetry element must be in our group of symmetry elements as well. And then with this condition, we have to show that the same applies for our matrix representation, where this is our usual matrix multiplication. So if we start out with this definition, how with with this requirement, how do we how do we uh, get our t's involved? Well, we have the definition of our t's over here. So we see that we have to act on a function of our eigenspace in order to bring in our t's. So we start off by O B O A times a uh, function our eigenspace phi q. Then we insert our definition right here. So we have O B. Then the sum over P. Uh, P is our n right here. T P Q A phi P. So we have done nothing else than just inserting the definitions and changing our indices a bit. This is a number, therefore we can act with OB directly on phi P. So we can write a double sum here over P and the next index we call M with our two matrix elements. If we call this requirement one, then by this requirement we have uh, to have a this being equal to a sum over M T M Q B times A phi M. This requirement is true because if we insert B times A in our definition over here, we arrive at this condition. So if we equate the sums for every element of the sum, namely for every M, we arrive that uh, this element right here, which we define, which was defined by this condition, can be written as a sum like this. And if we look at this expression very closely, we can recognize from linear algebra that this is in fact the matrix multiplication we're used to. This completes the proof. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to ask. Send me an email. I'll be glad to answer you. See ya.